So, well, Chairman, I'm going to start reading the floor to Minister Sandro Monta. And I will do a brief introduction to President Carroza. And then President Carroza will respond. Okay, so, please. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you well, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Anselmo Moto, the Deputy Ambassador of Italy and the host of the uh, Ambassador of the Convention of the Valley. Uh, unfortunately, I don't understand what we are reading. So, it was a great moment as uh, Ambassador uh, in uh, uh, some of our important meetings with Ambassador uh, uh, So, that's what we are going to do for the reception. So, I'm very pleased to be here to welcome you to the most important event where. So, to really carry on, and I'm sure that that will be a very interesting reception. So, first of all, let me welcome Professor Marika Carrozza, the chair of the Italian National Research Center, that promotes to all our guests here and online. Several years now we are having global events uh, on a, in an hybrid uh, modality. Um, so, uh, welcome also to all uh, those who are uh, following us uh, online. I want to especially thank the Association of Italian Scientists in the UK, uh, ICA, for having contributed uh, to the Canadian Organization of the UK. I would also like to take the occasion to give our welcome to Professor Roberto Brisa, uh, our new um, uh, scientific attaché who recently joined us. It's, uh, I'm sure that uh, you have already started to know him. He's been here for not even a month. He's very active. So, congratulations. We are very, very happy that after so long we are working to be attaché, we are now uh, able to uh, finally uh, cover this important position. So, um, this visit today of the delegation from the Genera confirms the strong interest of the Italian National Research Center towards the British institution and builds on the existing relationship. For example, the agreement, uh, an existing agreement, French uh, agreement, uh, with the uh, Royal Society of London and the Royal Society of Edinburgh. We were having a chat before, but I'm sure that we can have a discussion much more uh, in depth later on what we can do on agreements like this. I heard that um, uh, you have a very productive visit uh, of the Harvard campus uh, where many Italian scientists have been working together with the British colleagues on key research projects, such as those related to the IV. From a um, By hosting an event with an embassy of the Senate signal, <coughs> the Italian and British scientific community, we believe that science cooperation should continue and, where possible, be strengthened even after Brexit. This is really uh, our main message, and uh, we are starting in May of this year to know uh, to pass this. Uh, Science, in fact, benefits from an open exchange of ideas, knowledge, and people. And the embassy wants to confirm that it will continue to play its role in establishing and reinforcing the connection between the scientific community of our research council. Professor Carrozza's visit also comes at a very important time when the whole world is dealing with complex scientific issues. To name a few, we are recovering from the COVID crisis. We have to decarbonize. All the human activities for the climate change will be even more important, uh, and uh, hopefully, we will uh, manage to respect the deadlines that we all have. Uh, we have also to identify the best way to deal with interactions between humans and others. We have to learn how artificial intelligence can be very useful in scientific problems. I'm sure Professor Carrozza will cover this in depth. But I would like to say a few words on why the Italian National Research Center is particularly important in this context. First of all, it is active in different sectors, like health, 
the environment, energy, food, and now we talk to come to a space to see the old transportation system. It is a big task in Thailand to start working with the nature of the institutions in Europe. It also plays a very important role in education, in the form of many PhD programs. I confident that the National Research Center will play a crucial role in the transformation of the system to our national institutions and public plan. Why contributing to the final future of research now? Thanks for your attention. Thanks to Professor Salosa. I will now go to the conclusion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Mota. Thank you, everyone in the here. I just want to briefly introduce Maria Chiara Carlotta, a colleague of mine. We come from the University of Sports Tourism from Pisa. Uh, Maria Chiara has a degree in physics and a PhD in engineering. She is a member of many international advisory boards, expert in bioengineering, chair of the expert group on European Partnership um, of the European Union, founder of the Italian National Association of Bioengineering. She was rector of the School of Sanitana from 2007 to 2013. She was Minister of Education and Research in 2013 and 2014. She is President of the, she has been President of the Italian National Academy Research Council since 2015. She will talk about from the recovery and resilience plan to the reform process and horizon Europe. The three key challenges to be faced by the National Research Council and the Italian Research System. So, Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm honored to be here in the Italian Embassy to give this talk about CNR. I'm so proud to be president of CNR because it is representing something in the history of Italy and also in the culture of Italy and can do many, many things for uh, the recovery and the resilience plan. And I think we can uh, rely on many, many researchers and technical people and organization people uh, who is very much committed to do something meaningful for uh, the future of our country and the future of Europe. So I try to uh, enter into what we are doing at CNR today and uh, also I want to acknowledge that we are here and we have a really a very important mission. We met to many friends, Mark Thompson and uh, many friends from uh, <laughs> different parts of the UK, but uh, especially we enjoy the visit and we uh, are very uh, thankful for the visit and uh, the, the mm -hmm. exchanges and we think we can have something that is important for a little bilateral agreement in the UK. And, uh, UK. So uh, uh, I try to enter into uh, the, the presentation, of course, then we will have some questions and answers so I can uh, answer the questions to, to, to your questions. So uh, we are uh, the National Research Council, so we are basically uh, the largest public institution in Italy, uh, with um, research institutions in Italy, and uh, we cover many, many areas. So we uh, are covering areas uh, of research in science, uh, in, in chemistry, in human science, in history, philosophy, but also physics, uh, engineering, uh, uh, all areas are covered, and we are everywhere. Basically, in the ocean, in forest, in the North Pole, in the South Pole, and uh, we are so proud to be uh, uh, in the field doing research. And uh, so, I'm trying to represent uh, the, the, the work that many, many researchers are doing every, every day in many parts of the world, and uh, they are doing uh, this activity, research activity, and yes. Uh, Sometimes in difficult uh, uh, times, uh, in political trouble, or uh, uh, without uh, uh, enough support from uh, from uh, work from their funding, uh, they are doing their best despite of all conditions that uh, are outside. So uh, my mission as the president of CNR is to provide to them something uh, uh, which is uh, uh, 
uh, fundamental for doing research, a good <laughs> infrastructure, uh, a good system for recruitment, a good system for promotion in career, research funding, research infrastructure, and a clear position in the society. So they work must be recognized as fundamental for our future. So this is my mission, and I hope I will do at least something in, in, in that direction. And uh, so our mission is to do uh, uh, fundamental research, translational research. I am uh, I come from bioengineering, so my idea of translational research is to bring research from labs, from models, from uh, thinking to some uh, uh, applications in, 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 for example, in medicine, but also in industry, in, in, in innovation in society. So translational research is part of our mission, and uh, I prefer to use the, the translational research instead of the transit company, because what we transfer is research itself, and, uh, and also competence and knowledge. And, uh, Inductive leadership is part of our mission because we are a state research institution, so we have this uh, uh, fundamental uh, uh, role in Italy because Italy is a manufacturing country. It is still a manufacturing country, and it's a second manufacturing country in Europe after uh, Germany. So it's important for us to keep this uh, industrial leadership uh, Then social and industrial innovation, that means to promote innovation, and uh, to perform and address sustainable development goals, the United Nations goals. And finally, we are in the middle of the clean transition. So in Europe, we receive from the European Commission some additional missions, the clean transition. That means to support the Italian system, the public administration, and the, 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 the global Italian system and society to address the digital and the uh, green transition. So, the, the, the challenges that we are facing today are basically three. We are in the system, in the Horizon Europe and National Research and Infrastructure Plan. So we have a national plan for research, and we are also a uh, main actor in, in terms of uh, uh, preparing proposals and submitting and running projects in Horizon Europe, which is changing so much. It is changing, and I am following this change because I am a, a chair of an expert uh, group uh, by the way, uh, and uh, so I'm uh, also engaged in trying to support this change, especially in the partnership area, which is my area, and uh, I'm trying to, to develop a, a methodology to assess and monitor the impact of partnership. And partnership is also a key work of the second challenge, which is the National Resilience and Recovery Plan, which is a plan with uh, uh, an investment in research, which is important, an investment in research and innovation with specific guidelines uh, concentrating and focusing this effort in some specific areas which have been identified by the government. And uh, in, that, in that sense, PNR is uh, a sort of project relying on partnership, on the ability of creating network of centers, network of researchers, network between university and research centers, and also network with uh, uh, companies, uh, somehow they are also uh, involved in that, uh, in order to uh, address the objective of, of the plan. So it's important the networking ability and the possibility of the establishing new centers, new programs, new PhD programs, new activities based on this partnership. And this is important because uh, uh, CNR resulted to be uh, uh, important in doing that. Uh, with a sort of spontaneous bottom up uh, transition, uh, we, uh, uh, it, it turns out that uh, we are able to uh, be part of this network, uh, at least in Italy. And, uh, and this, to me, is it's, it's a very important signal that CNR is meaningful for Italy. And the third, we have the Piano di Rilancio, which is a reform of the CNR, supported by the government, by the President Draghi and the Minister Cristina Messa, she wanted to be uh, uh, okay to make the difference uh, with this government and uh, and uh, uh, in terms of uh, trying to improve and uh, invest in CNR, but also to ask some changes. So, Minister um, Messa and uh, President Draghi they asked to. Uh, uh, CNR to, be, uh, to make uh, a sort of ambitious plan. Okay, So we have to develop this plan, but they are investing in, in CNR trying to uh, okay, make something which is uh, new for CNR, so a new investment in our uh, endowment, in our uh, 
develop an environment which is open to diversity, open to gender balance, and uh, I want the CNN become some uh, open uh, system which uh, accept everybody, uh, and uh, not interested in personal orientation and personal position, but interested only in research, but open to everybody. So, diversity is an issue for me, and therefore uh, the, uh, um, our board of director, and we will work on that, okay? And, and then, if we look at the ecosystem of, uh, of CNR, one of the problems is that we are flat. So we have a single organization, and everything is uh, merged into this uh, single organization. But we are doing a slightly different thing, because we are running the infrastructure. And in this area, we are not only running the infrastructure, we are uh, uh, managing the open call, the peer review, the access to the infrastructure, the, the uh, the uh, purchase of instruments and so on. And then we have also research performance. People are working for uh, DRC, for the National Science Plan, for the Horizon and so on. And people performing the PhD in collaboration with the university. Then we have uh, some work that we uh, perform in collaboration with the industry, so joint labs um, and also joint labs with companies, with corporates. We have uh, some of them, and also we have some uh, joint units and uh, spin-off uh, uh, working, and also uh, some research services that we are performing, like industrial uh, projects. And we have also another part, which is important, especially in the, in the south and in the, in the north, so far from the from Rome. We are collaborating with local uh, governments in uh, in uh, different regions, performing some research tasks. Uh, like uh, monitoring of Xylella uh, in, in Puglia, okay, where we are uh, part of the regional system for monitoring that. We are working for meteorological forecast system. We are working for many, many things, doing many tasks. This is due because we have competences, we have technical competences, and sometimes in public administration they don't have competences for special tasks. So when there is uh, a special task, they are calling. Uh, for uh, contributions, and uh, we are answering yes. And uh, some of our researchers are committed for many years in performing these services, which are not really services with the low content. Sometimes these services are requiring uh, a lot of uh, skills and competence for our, our, our fundamental because also they use infrastructure. So, uh, the second question after recruitment and career is. Uh, is this the organization need, needing something which is different? So, the different administration for the different parts. So how we can keep together, but how we can we organize the, the management part in different ways? Also, with different assessment for the promotion and also for doing incentive for researchers. Because I want that people working at CNI can choose where they, they want to stay. What they want to do, they want to, um, to, to, to 
one and to, and make a sort of multi-dimensional uh, uh, assessment of their activity based on their uh, selection and their activity in the different areas. Because we cannot assess a person doing uh, really some research for public administration in the same way of people working in for ERC. Uh, project or, or similar. So we have to develop something which is adapted <coughs> to, their, to their mission. So this is here, yeah, okay? A very beautiful, beautiful uh, biological element, okay? Very beautiful, uh, able to move, but uh, uh, this um, flavor, I think it's in English, uh, I don't know, Pagulo in Italian, <laughs> it's looking for a house. And uh, it uh, used to find uh, a house, um, a shell, which is not uh, its own shell. And uh, by the way, he found a shell which is not natural, artificial, because of plastic surface. <coughs> and so it's stuck in this position and want to get out. So CNR is, uh, is like that. So my image is that we need to remove this uh, cap and uh, make uh, a, a CNR to be free to move and find an appropriate and uh, so this is uh, some of the research that we are performing and we are very much interested in polar research which is part of our mission and we are uh, keeping and uh, uh, contributing to the bases that are in the south and the north pole and uh, also we are receiving a new donation and uh, this is the falcon vessel which, which will uh, change uh, name in the future and it will become a sort of oceanography system to make campaign in the ocean it's, it, is, it is interesting why I'm uh, showing you this picture. It is because also in the 60s, last century, uh, in, uh, somehow participating to the uh, resilience and recovery after the Second World War, uh, one colleague of mine, who is uh, a lady, by the way, she is a uh, professor, uh, Giuseppina Liberti, uh, was promoting the kind of campaign with a donation of uh, a big uh, oceanographic uh, ship from the uh, US and doing uh, one of the first campaigns for collecting data in the, in the Mediterranean Sea. So, history is fundamental to understand what CNR can do. So, uh, researchers in CNR are proposing and uh, collaborating in order to receive this donation. From the administrative point of view, this is really a nightmare. But uh, we are managing that according to the Italian law, uh, okay, so compliant to the Italian law, and the party it is really a challenge, but we will uh, provide to the Italian community the possibility of launching new campaign in the, in the Mediterranean Sea and the oceanographic, oceanographic campaign in order to get collect data. When we are doing uh, something meaningful in the uh, FDS, so we are part of large uh, agreements and uh, part of uh, in managing this infrastructure. So we are the, of the gate to enter into infrastructure and we want to keep this possibility and to do, to do this uh, activity uh, better than now uh, possible, if possible with a, a good infrastructure. So these are the research infrastructure that we are managing in life science, in uh, environmental sciences, in uh, uh, human sciences, we have a lot of many also uh, research infrastructure in human sciences and uh, uh, related to cultural heritage management and also to the digitalization of uh, archives and uh, similar. So we have uh, a specific mission that we found uh, a the system that, but extracting information from our database, so we can see that we have uh, this uh, uh, mission in, in, in the Italian system, that we are managing infrastructure, we are managing important infrastructure, and we are doing that on behalf of the Italian ministry and on behalf of the Italian scientific community. So this is an important mission. And also we are in the, okay, building and contributing to build a new uh, infrastructure. So this is a picture from our uh, colleague Marco Paimani. <laughs> okay, and uh, so we are, uh, <coughs> Uh, how we are organized, so this is a picture of the different areas that we are covering, so we are studying data about who we are and trying to make this positioning of uh, who we are and where we want to do uh, to, to go, because uh, another uh, problem that we have to solve is how to make this uh, uh, program in terms of the areas that are covered by in the new position, so the, 
distribution and allocation of resources in terms of uh, new positions is something which is strategic for PNF. So we cannot do that by chance or by negotiation. We, have, we must have a, a clear strategic plan where we want to do uh, uh, where we want to go. So these are uh, the analysis. So we have performing uh, uh, position analysis and also uh, by relying on different uh, companies to perform this assessment for us and trying to make pictures and analysis compared to in, uh, European institutions. And this is fundamental because what I want to, 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 to promote, and we want to promote uh, with uh, my colleagues at CNR, here we have uh, some colleagues, uh, um, uh, Corrado Spinella and Stefano Fabris with me, what we want to do is to make a picture of what we are and then understand how we are positioned compared to other uh, research institutions in Europe. So we, uh, we uh, have a study of our uh, uh, parameters, key performance indicator uh, evaluation of uh, comparing uh, CNR with CNRS, Max Planck, uh, Karoliska, and other institutions. Because this is important, because when uh, I will discuss with the minister, uh, the, the president, uh, the result of our analysis, uh, uh, there are some uh, data are very clear, demonstrating that we need more investment, we need uh, more investment, but we can also show where we need more investment and how we are uh, performing compared to those prestigious institutions. So it's not something that we are looking inside Italy, but we are looking at CNRS because CNRS is the most similar uh, research institution, but also Max Planck and Planck. So this is the Lacrangian answer, the Sotsky answer. I go fast because I want to conclude. So we are doing this uh, position study. So the uh, 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 was uh, uh, selected, uh, uh, and uh, we are uh, making this uh, figure uh, and uh, uh, this is the analysis which was performed by an external advisor. So what is new in this reform plan is that the government, for the first time, I think, uh, in, at least in the last year, they asked for external assessment from external consultancy company and external advisor in order to make uh, measurement and assessment of our parameters. And this is fundamental for us because you can discuss the conclusion, of course. You can make an enter into the tape. But if you have external advisors, the numbers are not created by our staff, are created by others, and so these are uh, less, uh, I don't know how to say, bias on what we want to do. So, and uh, finally, the general scheme for the reform, and this uh, presentation today is part of this reform. And, uh, and this, uh, we have an internal advisory system, we have an external advisory system with different actors that we are consulting, and it's a complex system because I have, we have six months and we have to finish our uh, reform plan uh, by June, and uh, uh, we invented this methodology, which comes from my experience as expert, uh, as chair of expert group uh, for the European Commission, because we are using basically similar methodology. And uh, so we are uh, consulting uh, the external advisory, and we have a supervisory board member, um, a supervisory board which uh, was in, uh, called by the government, and uh, uh, this is the composition, and uh, it is international, and, uh, uh, and uh, this supervisory board has a, an important role in, in uh, monitoring, in approving, and in making position uh, on uh, our research and uh, uh, development plan, but and, you know, on our reform plan, but also they will monitor the implementation of the plan. This is a second innovation which is fundamental. So first, to have external advisors, second, to have uh, six, six months to, to uh, present it, and then to have a two year and half for monitoring the implementation of the program. So this is very innovative. So we must thank Christina Messa for that. And, uh, we have, uh, uh, so we invented this uh, pattern. So we are doing the, the proposals, the elaboration of the different proposals uh, uh, internal to the CNR. We have the governing board, which is basically the uh, board of directors of CNR. And then we have the supervisory board following this. So this is a sort of controlled growth of, uh, of the reform. And this is our uh, 
uh, newly uh, recently appointed the scientific council, which can be part of that, because they want to conclude <coughs> that. So these are the different chapters of the reform. So reform in project management, a reform of the organization of scientific network, a reform of the organization of research areas, a reform of the research impact evaluation system, a reform of the infrastructure management of uh, recruitment and uh, uh, promotion of the system and the uh, reform uh, induction digital So these are the different chapters of the report. And finally, I go to some because uh, I want to conclude uh, by speaking about some. This is an example of what we are doing. We uh, are developing a strategy which is emerging from the National uh, uh, Recovery and uh, Resilience Plan and emerging by our participating in, in participation in infrastructure. And uh, uh, so we are deciding where to go. So we uh, were in front of uh, a, a competitive goal of the government proposing uh, um, a new mobility center for green mobility center, a new um, uh, center for RNA-based uh, uh, drug advancement, and uh, a new uh, research center uh, for uh, in agricultural uh, technology in agricultural uh, and, uh, uh, and in plant uh, evolution, and uh, a research center in uh, uh, biodiversity. And uh, we selected biodiversity. So we thought that uh, we can make the difference in this area because we have thousands of researchers in uh, fundamental science uh, interested to uh, monitor and to enter in uh, the green transition, especially in the green transition with their competences, trying to make uh, the difference, trying to contribute in this, this area. So if we don't make this effort, I think we will never be able to get out of the uh, climate change problem. And we have to also give a sort of example to everybody that a large research center decide to invest, make the proposal, and create a new uh, research center in biodiversity, because this is fundamental for the future of the planet. So we decided to do that, and we uh, now are, so you, you can see here, we, these are the different, this, this is also high performance simulation uh, and computing, where we are main actors in material science and uh, in uh, uh, climate change. Uh, science, uh, climate change science, but uh, uh, we decided to support and to be the coordinator of the biodiversity center. So this is uh, really a big effort, and uh, it's interesting because uh, we are organizing the uh, architecture of this new center, and we also have included several, uh, uh, a network of several research centers and uh, uh, a several uh, uh, institutions in, in games and uh, also private companies and, uh, and uh, other uh, actors entering in, in that, and we are waiting for uh, for the results. So if I don't enter in one community of technology, in one of science, and in other science because I don't want to make a list of our initiatives. What I would like to say is that we are in front of uh, making some decisions on science. So we, uh, I think, we, we, we feel that. Uh, the decision of, of, of CNN, because our critical mass is high, is important, the decision will be fundamental for the scientific future of Italy. So this is a big, uh, an important responsibility for us. So um, besides of all reforms, innovation, and so on, we have to decide where to go. And uh, uh, also in terms of organization of uh, research in terms of uh, foundation of new areas, in terms of uh, giving freedom to researchers to explore uh, new uh, projects and new problems. And so this is uh, our main mission. And uh, I want that this is uh, uh, very, okay, uh, uh, a sort of priority for us. And so we, we want to organize also some uh, thinking on that, uh, on the future of science, because uh, in these times, very critical times, uh, we have both to go back and make a, a, a fundamental research and also fundamental thinking, I think, for our future. So thank you very much for your attention. Okay, thank you very much for
your group. And now we have about half an hour for QA, so I'd like to share uh, the session for whoever wants to ask the question. Even if we are live streaming, I suggest that you come up and ask a question from the night over there. And then, okay, so I'll watch. Thank you very much. So, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you very much, President, for her uh, extraordinary clarity. We really appreciate it, uh, both today and during the visit. Um, so, uh, as you know, there is an association of Italian scientists in the UK. We have about 750 members at present, and we represent a much wider community of about 5,000 researchers uh, in the UK, often in key positions that we saw yesterday. SFC visit. Um, so we are trying as an association to promote the uh, uh, engagement with this community uh, at all levels, and in particular we, we facilitated the live streaming of this event, uh, as you know. So uh, as part of this event, we also sent questions around, uh, so we told them around to ask questions to the president, uh, if anybody had questions. So I, I have selected two questions uh, from our uh, constituency. Uh, so the first one, and I'll ask them both so you can choose which one you have. Uh, the first question is from uh, Dario Alte, one of our ASK members, and he asks, it's a long question, but I'll, I'll uh, shorten it. Uh, so uh, there is a requirement for national, uh, for regional balance, uh, in uh, the, the particular in the context of the PM, uh, the Black Hawk recovery and resilience. That is, that 40% of the resources should go to the south region with it. So the question that Dara is asking is how do we make sure to fulfill this requirement and at the same time promote excellence, the most excellent plan? That's the first question. The second question, uh, tricky. Second question is from Stefano Bagno, another associate, and he asks uh, the following question, which you would expect from somebody who works in the UK and is Italian. Are there any plans in terms of using some of the uh, funding, of particularly of the PMRR, to bring more researchers and academics back to Italy, for example, by Greg Paul? For example? By Chiamatani. Let's the question for a second. Okay, thank you, Paolo. Maria. Okay, the first question is really because uh, we have to match this requirement which is due to the uh, European fund, and uh, uh, we know that, uh, which is uh, that we have 40% female and 40% uh, uh, from the South. So we selected the best uh, CV because the evaluation uh, of this uh, proposal, especially the biodiversity, but also we are submitting in these hours uh, ecos proposals on ecosystem, we have similar uh, um, constraints, we, but for the biodiversity center, we are trying to, to manage that uh, by uh, collecting uh, the best CV that we have. Uh, we uh, are very lucky because in the past, also because there were a lot of, uh, of um, uh, fund, uh, funding initiatives in the South, based on uh, uh, European funding, uh, we, our institutes in the South are uh, not so bad, <laughs> so they sometimes are better than some institutes in the North. So uh, I, 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 I cannot say that in the CNR there is this divide between the North and South, uh, uh, to be honest. So uh, we, we were able to find uh, excellent CV, and this is a characteristic of CNR that we have a very good and strong community today in the South. So I don't see uh, much uh, this problem. Uh, the problem uh, from the uh, point of view of the administration, we have so, a sort of team because we have to match this uh, uh, for each initiative. So we will work on uh, research management in order to be sure that we uh, comply to this, uh, to this mood. And uh, this was the first uh, uh, question. So, and um, by the way, uh, the Biodiversity Center will be in Palermo. So, uh, we selected a location in the south because we think that uh, the position for the biodiversity issue is fundamental. And we will have two biodiversity gateways, which will be a new version of uh, incubator and uh, outreach uh, system and uh, gateway for entering into biodiversity from all points of view. And one will be in Palermo and one will be in Venezia. 
and because we have a special building in Valencia in front of the Laguna, which is a wonderful place. So we will have two gateways looking at each other, one in the east and one in the south. The second question, yes, we are uh, trying to understand if we can use uh, um, the, the uh, Camus de Lirat in Italian, I don't know, in, in the Black uh, Hole, for uh, the initiative uh, uh, in, um, in, the, in the PNL. Uh, especially, I am trying to understand if for the Black Hole, I didn't say the answer, but here there is the uh, <laughs> director general for answering. Uh, because the university systems decided to put everything on the first level, uh, research, which is the first level, temporary level. So we know that the positions are temporary, uh, but uh, we are not, uh, I, don't, I don't think it is necessary. Yes, we have the possibility to go to the other level. So, so I want to not, uh, not focus not only on uh, research and uh, level of uh, entrance level, but also to uh, what we call the dirigente di scienza, which are the, the highest uh, level, uh, because I think it's important also you have seen the gender balance and also the balance that we have so flat uh, base for the pyramid and we want to make uh, a better uh, <coughs> system and more balance. So we will make these uh, goals for uh, Dirigent de Vichetta, which means uh, the highest uh, level, but uh, we uh, are studying if it is possible to consolidate this position with uh, additional uh, uh, competitive call at the end of the PNL. Because I think we have to state uh, for the, for, to be clear and honest with the searchers, uh, what are the possibilities of being hired with a permanent uh, contract after that? Because we are hiring with temporary contract on the end of but we can make some uh, innovative system by uh, at least saying which, uh, which kind of evaluation they have to perform in order to be consolidated. And I don't want to say that to be hired with the uh, transform into something uh, permanent, and which is possible in Italy only with a public competition. Okay, thank you very much. Next question, Mark. Yes. Thanks for the excellent presentation. Really interesting. I was sitting there thinking, oh yes, we have that problem as well. But many of the issues you raised are very familiar. Um, I think my organisation, FCSC, has a similar structure. It is science delivery, mostly scientists. So many, many of the similar problems. I was really interested about your benchmark. Um, we'll take that one offline, I'd like to follow up on that. I think it might be good for us to do as well, to benchmark ourselves up against you. The topic I wanted to just pursue was your structure of your research and your layering where you have 70% of the junior level. It's very, very hard for them to progress up in the organisation. We have exactly the same problem. Uh, we, have, we, are, we, have, we don't have a solution to that. We've been thinking about how we can do it. Um, very challenging. So I would be interested to hear your first thoughts, how you might be structured to address that particular problem, about how to provide those promotion opportunities within your organization. Um, okay, thank you, uh, Mark. I, I'm, uh, okay, what uh, we uh, are thinking about is to uh, change the assessment uh, system. Okay, the evaluation is now based only on uh, but I'm not sure if, it's, if it is fair or not, but only on uh, uh, parameters like uh, um, papers and uh, bibliometric parameters. And uh, what is difficult is that some, somehow uh, CNR is very interdisciplinary. So when you have uh, a physicist, a chemist, uh, 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 and uh, um, uh, uh, professor from biology or similar, you have the same, uh, uh, for the same uh, uh, competitive uh, uh, call, uh, people with uh, uh, com completely different uh, metric. Uh, and, and so this is difficult to compare because the impact cannot be the same, like science or uh, uh, physics or, uh, for example, uh, history. This, uh, you cannot compare. But we have uh, places, for example, in human science and cultural heritage, where we have people from chemistry, from physics, and also from uh, archaeology or similar. So it's very difficult. So 
we have to perform some uh, uh, normalization on, on that, first of all, so that in order to make people uh, uh, running completely the same uh, possibility. And second, what we are thinking is to have over dimension according to their engagement in different activities. For example, running different tracks and repairing the, the instruments on the big line with colleagues is not the same as uh, being uh, uh, committed to a research project. So we have to take into account that some people is doing a lot in terms of opening the, the big line and repairing the, the, the equipment, and we have to, I don't know how to make this then. But we can establish a new one, and if it is possible for us, it would be really wonderful to have uh, some uh, uh, committee thinking in that, because this is really the core of our system. And finally, what we are thinking is something uh, which is similar to habilitation uh, national, uh, which is a system with uh, some uh, threshold. If people is uh, above uh, some threshold which must be defined, uh, people can. Uh, make the, uh, uh, the can ask to be evaluated. So a system for uh, I don't know how to say, but filtering people and making people uh, able to be uh, evaluated, uh, uh, giving the possibility. So if a person is uh, uh, above those thresholds, in the university system it is working. I'm not sure if it can work also for us. So there is uh, uh, a discussion. In the past, some president and also. Uh, people from the parliament proposed that for CNR 30 or 40 years ago, and uh, but nobody did that. Uh, we have to think about that with some corrections because in Italy this uh, system based on the habilitation uh, national, which is similar to the German system, uh, has some uh, distortion and problems. <laughs> so it is also very much. Uh, constrained in areas, so and uh, this is the contrary uh, that we want. We don't want to be constrained in areas, so that uh, 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 we have people of the same area uh, evaluating people in, in, the, in the area, because there is some effect of boundary effect and uh, restriction and constraints are causing some disruption. But we have to think about that. Okay, thank you. Oh. Next question. Yes, please. Uh, Amanda is a close friend and a colleague for me. Uh, and also, the jet is also very busy city at the moment. Thank you very much for your, uh, for your presentation. Um, personally, I have several colleagues from the CNR and they're all brilliant scientists. Um, the work that you are that you're engaging to do with this time has changed. This time has changed very much to keep these people the structure that they deserve. When you say uh, I have a curiosity in terms of resources. So when you when you recruit do you have enough people even at the board level and that you may you manage to maintain them or do you lose them? And when you lose them, do you lose the Yeah, this is a problem that we uh, didn't imagine for so far, but it's a very good idea to assess. And for the moment, that is the perception that we have, uh, which is a perception based on the feedback from the Insti Research Institute. And uh, basically, the brain drain in Pazionar is from the university, because people with a very good uh, CV and resume and uh, ready to go to university, they are promoted professors and uh, universities looking at our researchers in order to pick the best and that is not good for me. So it's good if we are able to pick the best from the university. So first of all, uh, uh, we have to manage that in spending and also people is going abroad in some different institutions that is uh, part of the mobility, okay, but we are not able to attract uh, so uh, many researchers from uh, so we have to focus on attracting people in general, not ours, and this is, for me, is the fundamental. And those who measure this brain drain, and because in Italy there is this new initiative by the Minister Vesa, she wanted to make this uh, mobility act, 
which, in, which may be possible to move from one, one universe to another one with a project, and uh, also from, one, uh, from uh, CNR to a university, but also the content from the universe to CNR. So what we have to do is to concentrate, to make uh, CNR attractive for people from the university. I think that we can do that. Especially, my idea is for with associate professors that are not promoted in the university because of many reasons, sometimes are looking for promotion with the facilities, infrastructures, good positions, research institutes. So I want to put on that on these associates that are not becoming full, even if you deserve, then we can uh, um, offer to them the possibility of being promoted at the first level and uh, giving to them an institute and infrastructure to do their research. I think we can do it. Okay, thank you, Maria Clara. Yes, please. Let me introduce yourself. Yes, my name is Pierre Dragotti. I'm a professor at the City of College London. Uh, I left Italy 25 years ago, so I'm a little bit rusty with the Italian system. Uh, I graduated uh, 25 years ago and then left for a of curiosity and for some reason I became a lot uh, thanks a lot for your very interesting talk. You touched upon many interesting topics from evaluating interdisciplinarity, gender balance, diversity, etc. There will be many questions related to that, but I have a couple of questions I wanted to, to ask you. So I've been around, as I said, I've seen many different systems, not different perspectives. Uh, but I think some strength in the UK system, at least for universities, I don't know much about them, is that there's autonomy, and that helps because. Universities promote their own people, and if they are good, they can raise money, for example, for the students, so that the university has an advantage of that. So it's less centralized, I think, than the Italian system. And we also have this um, assessment framework called the first assessment framework. I think Italy has a similar system for a university. Is that still running? And so my question is uh, do you think so that would be good for a similar system for CNR? Uh, uh, and we should believe in autonomy. And the last kind of question is, isn't there a fiction between academia and the center, the MR, uh, in terms of funding, right? Because at the end of the day, all the money is most of the money comes to the government, so there might not be some tension. How do you reconcile these tensions? We have tensions with the, the, not the funding body, they take away money from the university. We don't know whether For your questions. So, these questions are very appropriate. Uh, first of all, uh, CNR is not a public because it's designed in the public administration system in Italy, and uh, this is an old vision. It's like a school in Switzerland or a city where you have a, a sort of infrastructure which is typical of the public administration, and also our researchers are part of the public administration. So they are uh, serving in the public administration. And what we have to change is to not to, uh, uh, to get out of the public administration because we want to be public, but to have more autonomy in terms of having also contact which is recognized in research with the peculiarity of research, which are different from uh, being given uh, stuff in, in the local administration or in the school system or in the agency. So I want to so we want to, to do something in that direction. To have more autonomy and to have a, a sort of architecture and organization in the public uh, law in Italy, it's not the public right in terms of uh, organization and uh, compliance with their law is not easy, but we can do some steps and uh, I think that this government can do something. Okay? So second point. University is much more autonomous in Italy. So they organize, so they have tools to comply, but they organize uh, competitive call for promotion. You know, in Italy, promotion doesn't exist. You have to make another proposal, uh, uh, another competitive uh, examination. So, but uh, they are organizing in autonomy, and this makes the difference. I am for autonomy. University must be autonomous. 
I am from the university system also. I worked for many, many years also at the minister. So I think that the autonomy of the university system is something which is a value. So to me, we should shift to giving to them also much more autonomy also in recruitment, in, in promotion, in, 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 and uh, um, get out of this system of the public example, which is uh, uh, something that is under discussion in Italy, but never uh, so, but I think that autonomy is a value uh, in the history of in the university system is autonomous. Yeah? And I want to be valid. I'm not sure that for still there are being autonomous is uh, uh, useful in terms of uh, this uh, uh, link with the Ministry of uh, Universities, fundamental for research infrastructure, for performing part of our uh, main mission, which is part of the state mission, not the state. In, I mean, uh, the um, green transition ministry, they have to decide on something or to have consultancy on something. We are part of the state. They, it's normal that they hire CNR in doing that because we are uh, for doing that. And uh, if you go to Korea, to Japan, to the US, the uh, research system as a, a sort of state institute which belongs to the state for that reason, that is uh, strategic to have a part of the state doing that. For example, guys in Korea or, or other institutions. So I uh, travel around the world, so I know that this is, and I learned by traveling that the research institutes are different from the US. And, 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 this is, and it's a different mission. And I want to preserve that. So I think that our colleagues on the supervisory board uh, are willing to do that. But we have to uh, receive more autonomy in managing funds. So, to be part of the state doesn't mean that we have to be uh, uh, compliant to rules that are embedded for the school system or for uh, agencies and not for research. We need a research management possibility and possibility of hiring them in autonomy, but uh, with some supervision from the ministry because of that. And uh, it's important. In France, there is something uh, which is related to the position of civil servants of the research. For them, it's fundamental that the researchers of CNRS are part of the state. And uh, so we want to build this uh, position in the society, which is fundamental, I think. And uh, so this is uh, uh, the, the kind of autonomy that I think is important for us. I don't know if I answered. And also, there is a tension, of course. Okay? Uh, we have seen uh, for the first call, uh, national, Centri uh, National, the call for the uh, National standards, it was really a sort of uh, big, big competition. And uh, so I was a competitor with other users, you know, that to receive this possibility of coordinating or of uh, having with, uh, with the CNR the best university, the best research centers. But apparently, we are the only institution in all the management system of the five centers, and we also are the coordinator of one. So the result of this competition is that we are part of the system with a very good leadership. And we don't want to be the only leader. We want to be part of the system. So we are now, we stopped and we decided that one coordination and part of other centers is not good for our balance. So the system must be balanced. Thank you very much. Very Yes, please. No, I am a professor at the University of course, it was a good university, but the university had the CNR Institute which was leading to symbiosis. It was the old system where the departments, and each department had a building close to it with the CNR Institute. And the, the CNR uh, researchers who I worked with uh, appeared and co authors of my papers, because they had a supervisor at the university, so it was an informal operation. Which was quite uh, enjoyable. You mentioned the uh, uh, CNRS and the uh, Translation of Germany, which has a completely different approach with respect to exporting PhD students. They have 
thousands or tens of thousands of PhD students who do their PhD and society. It's probably the effects of this university, but it's many times and it is also much like uh, society. So, in this cooperation uh, between the uh, CIRA and the university for the uh, aim of all species students, actually uh, before I left, before we got to go, we expanded the uh, systematic or it's still going on now and before sort of informal uh, way. And the second part of the question is uh, um, you mentioned the Islamic and the uh, and uh, similar organizations. Max Planck uh, has a uh, argument of view because I also like the year of this is a little bit like after tens of thousands of teaching students, it has tens of thousands of postdocs, and 90% of its workforce is temporary. And that's just the two directors who have all this uh, non dynamic workforce at the bottom, which is, I believe, not the model to go forward. So, for creating your teaching, which is a good idea, but after that, you could be in all perspective. And in your slides, uh, it was very interesting to see how the structures and uh, broke down in the nature of the nations, the gender, and so on, but I really see a percentage of temporary and non temporary stuff after each level. And uh, whereas we touched on this and said that, uh, of course, we can say the can be promoted, I would like to know how you see the development. In that direction, how much of the percentage of the post PhD workforce you aim at having a permanent as opposed to a temporary? For instance, at Max Planck, you cannot uh, go directly from a temporary position at postdoc level to that, but there is not a temporary scheme because in Germany there is similar structure as in Italy where there are different courses of uh, everything. I was here in London where I was hired as an associate professor and I was promoted to school professor without any of the This is a very good question. So you are giving me ideas for uh, other uh, assessment levels. And um, we have to find our way, let's be because uh, we are funding and sponsoring many PhD. Uh, programs. We are uh, also in the artificial intelligence. There was another slide, but I don't want to enter in detail. But we have a national PhD, which is coordinated by CNI and the uh, University of Pisa, for example. And all the initiatives where we are funding PhD and receiving funding for PhD programs. So we have to, first of all, to answer to the question if we have to uh, 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 be able to give the degree of PhD, so run the program as a CNR PhD, and we are thinking about that. And uh, so this is the first question. I'm not, uh, I am one of maybe the first president who thinks that it's, uh, to me, uh, that it's possible to think that CNR can run some PhD program in, in CNR without requiring uh, collaboration with the university. That for many reasons, but in some areas can be a sort of PhD which is uh, run in our institutions. Uh, uh, uh. Second uh, point is that uh, how to collaborate uh, with the university and create uh, some uh, joint unit. Uh, because this was the past, then somebody, I don't know how, but in many years they cancelled this, this system and CNN was separated from the university. I don't think this is really uh, good. We have to go back and try to establish new joint initiative with the university and uh, with some uh, peer uh, collaboration, not uh, with the supervisor at the university and uh, researcher at CNR, maybe the supervisor can be in CNR, 
you are sometimes they think that uh, CNN is the only doing a uh, uh, part of their work, but the supervision must be in the university. And so we have to establish this joint initiative like in, uh, we have with CNR as UCRA. And uh, so to, be, uh, to get the university to invite universities to be part of our campus, because we have research areas that are campus basically, and uh, university sometimes is not in the campus, we want to give the possibility for universities to have a mind that. And uh, from what concerns uh, the recruitment system after PhD, uh, the researcher in Italy at CNR tends to ask for staying in CNR. So all people that are recruited a year is uh, permanent, uh, with permanent contract. We have a part of temporary contract, but uh, for many reasons related to a process uh, guided by trade unions for being, uh, for uh, uh, making people with temporary contract are in permanent contract in Italy. We, uh, in Italy, there is this sort of cut, that uh, it's not possible to have uh, a continuous flow and uh, without uh, uh, a research, uh, uh, without a competitive exam. So I think that uh, there is now in the parliament uh, uh, a specific uh, app for uh, family track, which is also, uh, which applies also for uh, CNR, Establishing a program pattern for entering and being promoted at CNR. Uh, what is the best solution? I don't know, but I think we have to be able to establish a joint research unit and to encourage mobility between the two systems and to make CNR more attractive for, I said, associate professor. This is not the case because people cannot be promoted from associate to full without. Uh, uh, a competitive exam. So we can uh, call people and then make a value track for being promoted in science. So this is my idea. Okay, we so the last question, please. Thank you very much. It was absolutely inspirational which uh, in practice was a sort of a concept to bring together um, after education and after research and education societal elements which could be leading research and education to the region of the country. And I fully support your view that uh, an institution like in Siena, which is part of the country, which is a system of the country, is for the country. And I just was thinking that uh, maybe one angle to transform the informal collaboration on uh, articles and publication into something really structural could be, particularly for the national part, uh, join uh, the effort between uh, universities, the one away in Brazil, and uh, the CNR, because it's really the bottleneck would be. Because in the mission, when we made a conversation and working group as an expert, part of, um, what is missing most of the time is that you don't have an end. Yes, you can have a patent, but then you don't have a follow-up to the patent. And on many scientists of high level got patents, brilliant patents. The one friend of mine who actually was the first patent on stem cell transformation in Apoxia 10 years ago. Didn't really well. And now it's the, <laughs> I would say, the, uh, the grain for uh, genetic medicine. Now, my message is the following. This joint effort in the third mission and the mission, which is central for the cinema, and also some inspiration from the, uh, the case system, which has its own problems, of course. But, for example, the handbook system, whereby you have uh, the, I would say, the translators into effective tools for society, or whatever education and science can produce, could be an element of doing that. Thank you for very inspirational. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think. Uh,
so it's the issue from the art uh, uh, statement that Laura suggests here about uh, looking at the catapult because uh, we need also some, uh, some facilitation in terms of uh, uh, regulatory issues because uh, sometimes I regulatory issues that are blocking this transformation. Also, confidence and also the impossibility of. Uh, uh, compliant to the law. So we have to focus on that and maybe we can make a joint initiative to do that. Because I have a, a talk with the New York directors, I would suggest that what you said to make a joint uh, <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, very good. So let me first of all thank the head of the staff who organize all this, so my colleagues, uh, my director, Andrea, Fabrizio. I want to thank Elisa who Managed to make this uh, actually working. Thank you very much, Lisa, and your team. Uh, um, thank you again to Mark and uh, uh, Paolo for the organization of the campus. Thank you to all for being here. I don't know, uh, Miss, uh, you want to say something? Or no? Thank you again, Maria Chiara. So it's a very summer freshness now. We want to stay. Uh, 